I tell you, Ararat, the image is clear, so clear that I scratch my head hearing it even now. I am sending you as sheep among wolves. When I send you out there, you will have to image your presence out there like sheep in the middle of a wolf pack. And here's what I expect of you. Be as wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove. Now, with the blessings of an interpretive lens that has centuries of textual investigation wrapped around it, Jesus' instructions might seem practical to us. But don't you, Mount Ararat, agree with me that they are strange? My response to the hatred and vitriol and antagonism I face representing God's kingdom in the world, Jesus' teaching, your response to all of it is to be wise as a serpent and innocent as a dove. This is my roadmap for navigating the turbulent waters of persecution and opposition that lies ahead of me. And when I asked Jesus the question, why are you expecting this of me? It can't be the reality that you want me out there representing you, wise as serpent, innocent as dove. And Jesus' response is, that's precisely what I want. As you trust in the guidance of the Holy Spirit, as you're out there speaking truth to power, as you relate to people in your day-to-day -day exchanges, as you embrace your hurts, as you nurse your betrayals, as you respond to your injuries and offenses, as you are misunderstood and grossly misinterpreted, I want you to exercise and extend a spiritual deportment that is like both a wise serpent and an innocent dove. Now the disciples had to have listened to Jesus' words with a mixture of awe and reverence, but I know they had to hear those words with a touch of trepidation, and because it's Jesus talking, they fully recognized the gravity of his message and the importance of the instructions he was imparting. They could see the compassion in his eyes. He has poured his life into them, they hear the sincerity in his voice. He's always given it to them straight. They could hear the responsibility being heaped upon them and the determination they needed to offer in order to fulfill mission, to steward ministry, to expand the kingdom. You see it, don't you? The image is clear. Jewish people often viewed themselves as sheep among wolves. And maybe that's why Jesus decided to use the metaphor, I don't know, but I suspect that Jesus was teaching a far deeper and eternal truth. Here it is. Have you, Mount Ararat, ever considered that spirituality has a personality? That all of the disciplines that are to be exercised in the faith are to be exercised within a certain personality. Now, the reason that I make this argument is because we know that spirituality has a sound. When you hear the sound of it, what is its content? Hope and reverence and faith and expectation. It responds with grace and mercy and forgiveness. It surrenders to mission and purpose and ministry to go into all the world, to preach the gospel, to make disciples. But have you considered that while spirituality has a sound, spirituality also has a personality? It has a character. And Jesus images the characterization of spirituality this way. When you run into a Christian, you'll know you've run into one because they are wise as a serpent and innocent as a dove. It's as if Jesus says, child of God, this is the way I expect you to show up in the world. It's how you are to navigate exchanges with people. 
It's how you are to receive and filter what is said to you and done to you, wise as serpents, harmless or innocent as doves. This is how you process pain. This is how you process your response to people who may not cautiously filter their words like they should and talk to you like they talking out the side of their neck. This is the personality I expect you to steward that is shaped in you by the Spirit. This is why your authentic self is no excuse for not responding in a Spirit-led response. Because a relationship with Jesus doesn't change your core personality, it sanctifies it. I wish I had somebody here. A relationship with Jesus doesn't change your personality, but it transforms it. It doesn't change your personality. It consecrates it, that is, to the degree that you surrender to living led by the Spirit. Now, if you hear me, this suggests to us that every one of us in the room can change the way we think and process and respond to life and experiences and traumas if we believe in being transformed and sanctified and consecrated. You may never get rid of certain thoughts and emotions, but you can filter and process them differently when you surrender to the Spirit's shaping and leading of your personality. Jesus is talking to confused and fearful men who have been taught and guided and encouraged and pushed for the years they've been blessed to follow him. And now he is telling them that when they go out there to represent him, they have to act a certain way. They have to angle their approach a certain way. They have to argue the things worth debating a certain way. How is it? They have to appear as wise as serpents. I feel like preaching one more time. And as innocent as doves, only possible if they surrender to the Spirit's work in their lives. That same message is being conveyed to us today. There is a way, Mount Ararat, that the Lord would like for us to show up in the world. He wants you to be shrewd, which I filter from the original as intentional, but he wants you to be innocent, which I filter from the original as compassionate. And nothing you've experienced and no part of your personality can make this an impossibility because the Spirit can change you. <laughs> Have I got a witness here? Holiness has a personality. And it is likened unto wise serpents and innocent Doves, the disciples, are viewed as defenseless in this world, armed only with the weapon of grace and faith, and they have the mission of representing Jesus in a dangerous, albeit perilous, environment. How dangerous? Like a shepherd sending his sheep right in the middle of a wolf pack. And Jesus doesn't even tell them how he intends to protect them or defend them. He only tells them how they should approach and how they should act. It's as if he is saying to them, here is the angle I want you to take as you represent me in the world. Be shrewd, but be innocent. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere with this. Shrewd meaning avoid conflict. Attempt to sidestep attacks. Learn how to slither your way around some stuff. But be innocent, meaning don't live so hyper-cautious. Stop being so suspicious until you allow your thoughts to turn into fear and elusiveness. And the reason Jesus has to teach this, Ron, is because... It's not the angle and approach 
from either side that is the tension. Tell me just to be shrewd in my dealings and I got you. Or tell me to be innocent in my exchanges and I got you. The problem is not the polarized opposites. The problem is having to steward balance in the middle. Are you listening? Say something twisted to me. And I could steward either side. I could be wise as a serpent and strike you and you won't know it. Or I can be innocent as a dove and walk away. But having balance where I want to strike and Jesus said, hold that tongue, don't do it. Are y'all, come on, I'm trying to help us. And at other times, being so innocent, that innocent becomes a twin to naive and you end up stepping into an environment you knew you had no business walking in in the first place but you trying to act so innocent so you can claim victimization. It is the struggle of the balance between the two. And this why, that's why it's my surrender to the spirit shaping my personality because I don't want to live hyper-cautious, but I also don't want to be taken for granted. Who, who am I talking to in here? Let me see. I don't want to be put in places and spaces where conflict may be the very thing I'm trying to sidestep in my life. I have these exchanges with people whose intentions I can't quickly discern. And Jesus, you want me open and embracing, but then I run the risk of getting hit, and I don't want fear to win. It's the balance that is hard. And this Mount Ararat is precisely why it takes the Spirit's work in us to make this happen. Spirit shapes in us a personality. And here's the reason I'm suggesting all of this. All of that was so I could get to this. The message Jesus was conveying to his disciples is the same message he's conveying to us. I need you as part of your personality and deportment out there in the culture based upon the Spirit's work in your life to be as wise as serpent, innocent as dove because your Life in Christ makes you an influencer. Yeah. I wait. And it's whether you like it or not. You may not like it, but this is the personality Jesus wants you to surrender to having shaped in you. He makes you an influencer. It's why the Lord invests in us spiritual gifts and our gifts residing inside of us become attractive to people who need the benefit of the exercise of that gift. 